Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's session, part of Cloud Native Data Management Days. In today's session, we're going to talk about MinIO object storage and VMware's data persistence platform. First, I'm going to talk about the changing landscape in the application world. Then we're going to explain why VMware chose MinIO and why object storage is critical for today's cloud native world. And then we're going to show you a quick demo integration to backups with Veeam. Let's get started. Today's world of applications is changing dramatically. Everybody is familiar with legacy application design, which is self-contained, large application that is trying to do everything put together. They tend to be complex, really hard to scale, very much of a vulnerability to failure because a simple failure in one component can bring down the whole application stack. So as a solution, five, six years ago in the industry, a lot of the applications get started written into smaller sets of interconnected services or microservices. So this approach in application development truly first changed the way applications are uh, developed and deployed into various uh, businesses and provide uh, services. Then it started to affect the way infrastructure is being designed as well. Hyperscaler took the lead in this. Microservices approach allowed them to scale dramatically. Faster technology adoption for the users made it a must have for most of the industry across different business lines and different enterprises. So with that approach, object storage, as well as S3 compatibility with the impacts of the cloud became critical and very important for developing in this new wave with microservices. Of course, Kubernetes also helped the ease of using Kubernetes and managing these microservices and these smaller applications allowed people to really go towards that type of an approach that, rather than the legacy approach that we are all familiar with. And this ITD, IDC study shows that very clearly. 51% of the spend that's been happening in technology has been happening in line of business IT, surpassing the infrastructure, the legacy hardware-based uh, spend that's happening in the industry. And you can clearly see many more applications will be using cloud native tools and methods in the next three to four years, clearly. Let's talk about vSAN data persistence platform why VMware and why we send data persistence platform. All of these changes were happening. VMware realized that and they took the core of managing these microservices, which is Kubernetes, and they started having it part of their full stack at the core with vSphere. As part of that, data and data persistency is critical. So they created vSend Data Persistent Platform and they picked MinIO, which is really popular in the data persistency from uh, a Kubernetes perspective, because we started with a cloud native approach to data persistency and storage with S3 compatible approach. They picked us a small Series A company and put it as their launch partner, part of this effort. So having this approach of Kubernetes at the center and allowing people like us, MinIO, who does data persistency best, integrate into their ecosystem, they are providing best of both worlds to developers as well as the IT admin. Through their vCenter, IT admin can manage the whole infrastructure and developers can come in from Kubernetes API natively and get access to all the all the things that we provide, data protection, BitRot, and other services like encryption and other things that we do natively part of MinIO. So why object storage? Let's say a few words about the importance of object storage in the new world. Kubernetes and microservices required API integration into data persistency as well. So having S3 compatible APIs became quite important. Cloud, public clouds and Amazon specifically open up the way to have ease of use with S3 APIs for from a storage perspective for all these kind of applications and we were uh, we were there as minio following every step from an s3 compatibility and all object storage in general needs to have this type of uh, api approach in order to be successful in this new world the scale is also important you need to scale and object storage is critical from that perspective because you can easily scale object storage across 
different uh, hardware and that's uh, that's an important point and also built-in erasure coding and other mechanisms that comes with object storage makes it really easy for cloud native applications to use object storage as the choice of um, so data persistency so minio uh, and data persistence platform i already said a few words about why we were chosen and we had a deep integration I uh, worked with their engineering, VMware's engineering, to come up with a very seamless integration. But the, one of the reasons, or a few of the reasons why they chose MinIO was performance. We are the world's best performing object storage. We have a lot of integration. Having S3 compatibility opened up many doors for us. And our security and compliance from object lock to integration to various KMSs we are pretty well covered in terms of integration to any of these security requirements that uh, the microservices and Kubernetes environments will need. And of course, being software defined and having a model for regular coding that gives you quite a lot of yield when you configure it for the best of both worlds, basically. You can have an adjustable erasure coding to get you the best cost per the yield that you're getting from your storage. Uh, that gave uh, VMware more reasons to work with MinIO for their uh, data persistence platform. So Kubernetes has always been cloud native and we are the cloud native uh, choice for many. B before Kubernetes was the choice for many of the enterprises to manage their environments. We started with containers day one. We were already containerized from day one, and that's kind of the obvious choice for many in most of the deployments. We built onto Kubernetes APIs. We can natively integrate it. We make sure that that's a critical component that's always there. S3 compatibility is in our DNA. We started with that from day one. And also, as I said, we started with containers. And now if you look at the deployments of MinIOs around the world, about six, more than 60% is containerized. If you look at those, half of them is run and managed by Kubernetes. That makes MinIO is the clear choice when it comes to Kubernetes and cloud native environments. With that said, I'm going to uh, stop here for a bit and let uh, my colleague Echo to go into a quick demo, which is going to, we believe that the showing is powerful and we just want you to see how we can easily integrate to various applications, but in this case, a backup application, Veeam, and then I'll come back and summarize it very quickly. Echo? Thank you, Art. So we're going to do a five-minute demonstration of using Minio via the VMware data persistence platform as a sober tier for Veeam backup. So within the vSphere UI, you now have the option to deploy Minio tenants. So we're just going to go down into the cluster, configure tenants, and we're going to add a new Minio tenant. We can call this whatever we want to. You can put it into a namespace each Tenant has to be deployed to its own namespace, but of course you can have unlimited namespaces. So choose a storage class, and we're going to choose advanced mode so we can see some of the advanced options we have for creation. So if you'd like to use a custom image so that you have a newer release of MinIO or a newer release of the MinIO console, which is the UI for managing your tenant, then you can put those here. Also use a custom container registry Etc. And you can also enable Prometheus metrics to have some monitoring of the cluster. We're going to use the built-in IDP, but we do support OIDC and Active Directory as well. We're going to enable TLS here because that's required for Veeam. You can enable server-side encryption if you'd like to. Uh, it can be done at the Minio level or it can be done at the Veeam level, but it shouldn't be done at both. So here we're just going to create a very small cluster uh, we'll give it four nodes and say 32 gigs. Of course, this would not be production recommendations, but for purpose of demo, it's just fine. Um, here you can set the erasure code settings, and it tells you some information about your tenant. 
When you create the tenant, it's going to give you a one-time view of the Minio access key and secret key, which is how you access the object storage, and the console access key and secret key. And the console is how you manage uh, the Minio uh, tenant via UI. So make sure to copy those credentials. It'll take about five or six minutes for this to deploy. So in the meantime, we'll take a look at a uh, tenant that we've already deployed. So if I go into the details of that tenant, I can see the menu endpoint and the console endpoint. So I can go into this console, and here I have the option to manage everything menu. In this case, we want to create a new bucket for Veeam. And in order to use Veeam's object locking uh, called immutability, we need to turn on versioning and object locking in the bucket. We'll save that, and then we're going to copy this Minio endpoint that we're going to use on the Veeam side. So in Veeam, we're going to create a scale-up backer repository that has Minio as the S3 compatible capacity tier. So we'll call this whatever we want to. Add the perf uh, disk. And then we're going to extend uh, the scale-up backer repository. So we're going to create a new S3 compatible object store, in this case Minio. We'll use that service endpoint from the console, and we already have some credentials in here. Here, we're going to take a look and choose that bucket that we created in the console, and it's going to need a folder created underneath it. So we'll just create one called backups. And here's your option to use that immutability feature uh, where you can make sure that backups can't be overwritten or deleted. So we'll apply that. And then we can finish. Now, once this is done, you'll be able to use that uh, S3 object storage server tier in order to back up your uh, Veeam backups. So let me turn it back over to Ort to summarize for us. Thank you very much, Echo. Let me summarize some of the topics we have talked about. VMware's data persistence platform and Minio represents a true cloud native solution. VMware putting Kubernetes into the center of vSphere brought cloud-native approach to enterprise IT simply by delivering a seamless integration to existing platforms and operational methods that they are used to. And Minio has always been cloud-native from day one. It has always been in our DNA. So this approach was a true natural organic integration from our perspective. The second point is simplicity. Simplicity, in my opinion, translates into lower operational cost and large savings over time. And Minio, with its software-defined approach, and a philosophy that makes simplicity at the core of everything we do at Minio made it an easy point for us to deliver a product that just works. And that simplicity in larger environments translates into large savings, as I mentioned from a TCO perspective. And the last point I want to make is performance. Minio is truly high performance and works on any commodity hardware already. And we have proven this, proven this to be true with lots of benchmarks. And working together with VMware, now we can say that vSAN Drag can also deliver Minio speeds in these large scale environments. With that, I would like to conclude our session here. But if you have any further questions about Minio or details of our integration with VMware, please join our Slack channel or simply visit us at min.io. And thank you very much for joining our session.